I imagine this as a very, very important uh, occurrence in my life. It's like a, a person you uh, love deeply. And I, I really think in terms of, of the reality, when I photograph something, it's like having a, a dear friend in, in, in fate, F-A-T-E, because I really believe that we're given opportunities. And, and as an artist, there's nothing better than something that just you're not prepared for. You know you're gonna be uh, surprised and humbled and even frightened, but you have to do it. And I think that's the, the kind of a triune factor of creation uh, of, of art. And you have to break through those things and say, I'm here, uh, what am I gonna do? And uh, the answers come. You know, we've known each other for, for a really long time and we've had, you know, a, a, a very long history. Um, a good one. A good one. And, um, but, you know, as you know, and as I know, and as many people are starting to know that you've been, you know, diagnosed with dementia, and we just started talking about that. And, you know, it's such a prevalent thing. But there are very few artists that are, um, that are willing to talk about it. Like, you know, as you're making the art, you know, and as you know this is happening, are you doing things differently now? No, not that I can tell. Mm -hmm. I was gonna reply that I was born with dementia. It just got worse. Yeah. But, <laughs> but we're gonna try to stay serious right. for like a minute. Ready? Okay, okay yep. go, ah. go. All right, well, uh, it doesn't really affect me mm -hmm. because uh, I have things to do, images to make a life to live, and uh, things that come into my life, you know, usually objects that I photograph or things that I think about, people that come into my life, and I, I really think that it's, it's fate that uh, brings that together. And given my age, you know, I'm looking at 80, uh, stuff like that is gonna happen, uh, but I'm glad that it's, it's not limiting me physically, mm -hmm. you know? It could have been something that keeps me in bed all the time, whatever, you know? Right. I'm able to do my work, I'm able to think and, and live my life. And the most important thing, the bottom line is why the images were made, what they mean, and what purpose are they gonna serve in the present and hopefully in the future. Well, you've been doing this, what, for over 60 years, yep. right? Yep, yep. And, and, you know, there's been a constant thread, right? There's a very solid thread through all your work. So at this stage, when you're looking at, um, you know, being almost 80 years old, where do the ideas come from now? I mean, do you, you dream things? Do you look at books? Like, where, where do the new pieces come from? Well, you could have asked that question when I was in my teens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same thing. It's, it's kind of an impulse. Maybe it's a kind of like a, 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 a factual thing. You know, different kinds of associations come together suddenly. In, in, in the time it takes for me to say, oh yeah, that's it, that's the way uh, it has to be. But usually it's generated, an idea is generated from one particular factor. Like an object current. or yeah, something? Yeah, it's current, and that puts mm -hmm. it together. Well, you know how like a lot of artists, um, they pre-plan everything, uh, and so they say, oh, I, you know, I want a bottle, I wanted this, I wanted this, they put it together, and other people just start looking around, and, and or they have dreams, or they, they're reading something and something comes to their brain. You know, you're, you've been doing this work for so long, I just wonder, you know, you've never had writer's block, so to speak, correct? No. Um, which is a, a miracle. I guess the question that everybody wants to know is what keeps you going? Well, I keep things simple. Uh, I don't uh, have uh, perceptions of, of anything ahead of myself. I just live one day at a time. I enjoy what happens in that day. And usually, it, every day is a kind of a gift. And every day, usually, uh, there's something tangible that comes out of some experience. And even though you, you can't def try, try to define a mystery, uh, but collectively, I think those things come together as a possibility for an image. And that's the best way I can define it. It, it seems very, very um, uh, transparent, or you, you can't grab anything, mm -hmm. but that's the way it is. And then once that is decided upon by myself, 
then it's built. And uh, there are two kinds of, I guess, photographers, people that work in the world and people that work inside themselves, their own world, or their interior world. And when I had an idea for something, something that would kind of kick it off, uh, and I, I can't, it's impossible to say what it was in any individual time or, or purpose of, of the photographs. But um, when I saw a person, got an idea, or saw something that generated that, uh, I would have no fear and I would do it. Nobody bats a thousand, but I think I'm about 80, 85. So that's not bad. Do you actually have a favorite photograph that you've ever made? I mean, yeah. like if you had to say, this is my favorite well, weekend. I, I can say that the kiss is probably my most uh, written about. Yes. Infamous, yeah, maybe. Yes. Uh, and and uh, of course it is personal right. because it's uh, my brother and I, with right. the, the twindliness, the whole thing too. But beyond that, it's, um, uh, it's seeing the vision and looking at the vision as you're seeing it, if, if that makes any sense. Uh, because that's always been a kind of window into the rest of the work. And uh, it basically is, is infamous, uh, kind of famous, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I think it's, it's nice that you stumble onto things at the beginning, and that was something that uh, just happened in itself. And you know, I was uh, given this head, I didn't know what was in this bag, <laughs> at the university here when I was a graduate student. And the person who gave me that as, as a loan, I signed paperwork and whatever, I had no idea what was there. And, and this has been written about you know, in many times, but when I got back to my studio space, I opened it up and I saw these, these, uh, this uh, head that was cut in half. And, and to me, that was revelatory. Uh, uh, it was so beautiful. I, I put it, I covered it up again and thought of the experience that this was hopefully going to uh, occur. Now you mentioned, and of course most people know this, that you're an identical twin. Um, how, I mean obviously that's very different than the way most of us are raised. Uh, I have a handful of friends that are identical twins. Of course they all played tricks on people growing up. You know, they did all the things that identical twins do, but you and your brother are quite different. Um, while he, you know, Jerome's an artist as well, but, but growing up, not today, how did that affect you? Because I know that from the people I know, um, it's, it's very different when you, you share this identity with somebody else. I, I think it makes life easier uh, because it's like seeing yourself as another person in that same reality. Mm -hmm. So, so you're, you have a, a kinship there and, you're, uh, and you can see the outsideness of it. You, you can imagine yourself not as a twin, seeing the other of yourself. And I think that's, that's special. That's and and uh, much as I, I remember, uh, the doctors told my mother that maybe you're gonna be, you know, maybe there's gonna be quintuplets. I mean, she was so big, whatever. And, um, but there was, I believe, uh, a, a triplet that right. didn't survive. And uh, I used to, before I would, first heard that, even as, a, as a, a teenager, I remember making jokes like, well, we bought the shares out, you know. <laughs> we want an exclusive. <laughs> but did you ever feel, like prior to that knowledge, that there was something missing? No. Okay. No, uh, because I think uh, it, it, it's a gift, and I, I think that uh, providentially God doesn't make mistakes. If, if that person did exist for a moment, it existed. And, and then for, for the, from the Catholic standpoint, you know, there used to be the thing called limbo, which is not the dance, but that, that basically uh, children who are born without baptism go to limbo, you know. Uh, but uh, it's, it serves a purpose. I don't know what purpose it served, but uh, that's, that's providential, we'll say. Uh, that's a, a meaning and, and knowledge that uh, I guess we can never know. Uh, we'll probably find out about it at the end. Were you raised going to church? Yes, because um, my father and mother uh, had agreed 
that, and the story goes back and forth, I guess, but the, the children would be raised as Catholics. And uh, my grandmother, my mother's mother, was very, very, she was from Italy, and she would say the rosary every day. I remember sitting on a lap and playing with the beads and things like that. And, and for me, I uh, can't speak for my brother or my sister, but for me, uh, that was reality, you know? Uh, nothing comes from nothing. The planets have to be made somehow. Space and the universe have to be made, and why not have a maker? That seems logical, you and know? do you still believe in God? Yeah. Yeah. Do you go to church? I go to church. I don't go every Sunday, mm -hmm. but uh, I pray before I go to sleep. Yeah. I say prayers. I wish uh, people well. I think about them. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm basically at peace. Uh, I don't. I can't. And I, I tried this a few times. <laughs> I tried not being religious or a believer. It doesn't work. I feel, I feel very, very empty. And I think that's, uh, that's belief uh, is, depending on the writer, the theologian, is a gift. And I think that's the greatest gift I have. Many of us see a similarity between the work that you do and the work that Jerome does, even though he's a painter. Um, you know, there's some, there's some sort of, what's the right word, torture, if you will. There's <laughs> angst. Um, there's a lot of Catholicism, there's a lot of referential work. Do right. you see that or do you, or, 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 or no? Yeah, I, I, I do, I do, but I don't make uh, any kind of direct association because they, they can't be. But one thing, and I'm sure he would say the same thing from, from being a painter, I can say this, the, what I have being a photographer, that in a painting or sculpture, you have to invent that. You have to basically create the, the, the image. In photography, it's there, although the way I work, I basically apply different things to, to that found or, or photographic image. And uh, I don't think there is... Um, well, you're creating. I mean, you're not just going outside oh, no. and taking a photograph. Right. So it's the same experience, if right. you will. Right, right. And... and uh, uh, but I, I think people want to have, they want to see this kind of like right. similarity. Because you're and, identical twins. But with different right. souls, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and if, if they're interested in, in that kind of fusion, that's only the physical, you know, the, the body part, and, and not the spirit. And, but I'm, I'm always fascinated by uh, the fact that we do have a similar interest. Yeah, I mean, and look, you're both in the arts. Right, but it's expressed through the different yeah. medium. And uh, that's, that's nice. I, and sometimes I was looking through a book recently, the Wicked and Wicked book, and there was one thing uh, that I can see the dates that uh, uh, he and I have, have similar, even though we lived apart for most of our lives, uh, we have similar interests. And that's fantastic. And it's enjoyable seeing how he goes about it uh, in, in the fashion and the medium of, of painting and drawing, mm -hmm. and uh, myself. We're sitting in front of this ridiculously amazing flat file. Ridiculously when, amazing. When, when did you do this? I mean, when did you start doing all this? Because I had a, a way of, of uh, when I print, it's, it's layers of stuff. Yeah. And I have to keep track of that. And there was no way other than this way of, of labeling the drawers with what's inside and then separating them with the cardboard, white cardboard. So we have like glass in here. Mm -hmm. We have uh, poetry. What is poetry sheets. when we see so little? So you have the setup for everything in here. Majorette, yep. This is crazy. And do you know where everything is or do you have to keep looking at all this to find it again? No, I didn't put it alphabetical. No, because that would have been too. No. No. I don't work that way. No, I, don't I did think it so. as I was. I filled it up as I was working. So the top so should be some of the earliest pieces. Well, no, the earliest pieces should be here, here. because it's an arm length, uh -huh. and then I went up and down and crazy. Oh, gotcha. And then I started stacking. Let me see. I want to see what's in here. These are things I use for printing. See, these are the setup sheets. Wow. See, this is Bosch for triptych and big print. And then that's the, the, the size, and usually it's accompanied by glass. So wait a minute, so you, you, you sketch this whole thing out as right, to where you easel. want. This is this the is easel edge. Easel? Well, I didn't know you did this. Yeah. So every and single everything. one. Mary Magdalene triptych. And so is that on the back of, yep. Yeah, I have another print. Uh -huh. and, that uh, is so cool. 
allegory for a future age. Uh, some of these parts are arcs I, I make right, the pieces, cut out. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to me about this glass. Okay, well, what see, we now, even here? these drops are important, see? Uh -huh. That's why it's on top. See, what happens with using glass is that what I want to do is actually, it's, the image is very close to being finalized in mm -hmm. this case, but I want to make some marks that I don't want to make it on the negative, so I can make it on the print, mm -hmm. but the way I can make it on the print and still change it is on glass. And so that it's a discovery too. Mm -hmm. that every time I, I, I use stuff from the kitchen, it could be uh, tomato sauce, So what is this? Syrup. Do you uh, that's, remember? Yeah, that's India ink. That's India ink and the brown stuff? Uh, brown India ink, I don't know. Well, this is really early work. <laughs> well, now be careful. What? Maybe it's my work, I'm not gonna print. fuck it up. Yeah, you will. No, I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My first date when I came to Albuquerque. We're just going to do this without sound. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. ah, that's great. Oh, there I am. Mm -hmm. Tortured the Pope in exile. How lucky. Collector of fluids. Love it. These are Arab. I took the, I, I got an Arab dictionary. Do you know what it I, says? Well, you know, when this was ex exhibited in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, there were some people who spoke Arabic. And they would say, hey, where'd you get this about the diseases of the eye? And they would, it was right. It was oh, about the diseases of the eye. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's nice, too. My second date. And there. Oh, I like that. So here we have the infamous piece, uh, <laughs> which people would die for, literally. They have. So do you know the story of this? I, I, I told you this once. The first time I showed your work, somebody came into the gallery. This was in the wall. They ran out vomiting on the street. And I didn't believe it. And then years later, whoever it was came back in the gallery and like, yes, that was me. I was like, you actually sat and vomited on the street because of a photograph? And he just couldn't handle it. Because it's the thalidomide guy. So did you used to put red, big red dots on your master prints? Uh, that usually means it's sold. I don't know why I put those. I, have, I like putting red dots on everything. <laughs> and then my all-time favorite title, Testicle Stretch with the Possibility of a Crush, crush Face. face. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And yep. Was... Every single one of my, the workers that comes in my house when they look at that, they look at me, and I was like, well, if you don't do your work properly, this That's is what happens. That's what's going to happen, That's right. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. more. I love it. I love it. <laughs> there she is again. Yeah. 83s. OK, Las Maninas. Las Maninas. That's me. I finally got to see the original uh, last summer when I was in Madrid. What do you mean original? That's the original. I know. I'm so used to seeing your piece that when I saw the original, oh, no, no. I was like, wait a minute. This is not the real piece. It was really stunning um, because <laughs> I'm so used to seeing yours, you know. For me, it sums up uh, your work in a nutshell. Thank you. I think this is, you know, it's just got everything in it, including you. Yeah, I made this too. Yeah. I made the blow-ups. Yeah. And the Always Picasso. Most favorites. people don't get that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And the little girl, you know. Yeah. I was so fascinated. Yeah, it's a different one. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I'm waiting for one that we see where you go, oh my God, I hate this. <laughs> Insects re, uh, reenacting the crucifixion. Oh, I love this one coming up. Love it. Love it. Hmm. 
He's beautiful. Yeah. I forgot how I met him. I mean, just beautiful. Just beautiful. I mean, uh, like a poetic. like a La Giovanissima almost. Like they would be so great together. Right. Except I think La Giovanissima is sold out. So. Wow. So we've got this piece, Mermaid's Tail, and we're going to be showing the backdrop, um, yep. and and as 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 many as as much of the set as we can gather. Okay. So talk to me. Here are your sketches. How did this piece start? Uh, have Chris, who she's uh, my assistant, uh, uh, paint the penis cast, but paint the penis skin color so that it can be made up white. So that's a different thing mm -hmm. as far as what uh, tones look better in photography. The model was going to be made up white, so the, the, the penis couldn't be dark, had to be white too, but not so white white, not porcelain white. Wearing the latex penis that Chris is, is painting. painting. Yeah, but and it, then it actually, ends up here. Yeah, but you see the penis. So how'd she become a mermaid? Uh, Where'd the mermaid come from? I think this was a shell. Okay. See this this kind of rising uh -huh. from see, the oh, sea. Yeah, like a Venus. Yeah, kind of painted, and and so. so the background was painted, mm -hmm. and uh, we gather these shells and peripheral stuff, anchor rope and whatever. Okay. But we actually ordered a tail. There was a catalog when it went online. You can for, order a tail. We ordered a tail for the baby here. You can, you can order a mermaid tail. Right, and then this the one catalog. too for her. Of course you can. We didn't I mean, make this. But is that a co that's like a costume of some nature? Right, right? Yeah, yeah, like guess, a yeah. Halloween right. thing or whatever. And uh, well, especially if you're, you know, yeah. if you have no feet. Yeah, I guess that would be very <laughs> important. I mean, who doesn't want to be a mermaid sitting <laughs> among the but, clouds? But I did, I did put that in. I did put the penis mm -hmm. in. Yeah, it's very we subtle. I didn't one. even yeah, notice it. It's, but, it's there. You know, it is there. But I, I like that because I like the fact that people find things. Well, you know, in your earlier works, it was a lot more uh, prominent, shall we say. Right. Uh, and so this one it is quite quiet and subtle. Uh, yeah, well, well, you know, it would be, it would be detrimental, if mm -hmm. you think about it, having something that is, you know, uh, in, a, in a larger state, right. it would do offset everything. But this this print should it's been printed uh, by myself. I do my own mm -hmm. printing course, processing everything. It has to be mounted and then waxed. Mm -hmm. And the wax is a, a soft wax. Uh, it's a um, it's like a beeswax. archival wax. Yeah, mm -hmm. that I apply with my hands and, and mm -hmm. buff with my hands. And it's very subtle, but mm -hmm. it'll pick this. Uh, it'll pick it up. Yeah. and warm it up, the image, mm -hmm. and it gives it a little bit of a luster that makes it a finished, uh, finished uh, object. You put the background together, mm -hmm. you find the model, find the baby in this case, the peripheral stuff, and uh, you just hope for the best. I, I just like the idea of, of an imagined reality that even if you didn't know the name of the piece, right. uh, you would have to either be charmed by it or, or it, it basically pulls you in somehow. So she, st you, so basically, it started out as a reclining nude. Right. She ends up in a shell, and then she ends up with part a baby. Of this, with a baby as a mermaid among the sea, and she's but you been, see, you know, but, she's but, alive. Uh, yeah, but because the 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 tail T A L E <laughs> is also a, maybe a, a yeah. sexual occurrence. As so. only you would see. Well, yes. no, but here's the proof of it, for well, God's well, sake. Well, she could have found the baby in the sea. Oh, yeah, but it, it really <laughs> depends how one looks at it. I mean, yeah, let's talk about your dad. Um, I don't know much about your relationship with your father. Yeah. What 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 kind of relationship did you have? Well, he he and my mother uh, separated when my brother and I were, were three. Oh, wow. That made my sister mm -hmm. six. Mm -hmm. And she, was being a girl and older, uh, really had uh, a real, well, I wouldn't say, a, but a, a, a ma more mature uh, factoring as far as arguments and things like mm -hmm. that. Uh, my brother, actually, Jerry, made a painting of uh, my mother throwing uh, frying pans at my father <laughs> in fights that they had. Then he would storm out. And uh, I remember later on uh, his introducing me to the woman he was living with. Mm -hmm. And actually all of us uh, went over to his house and met her. Mm 
What age was this? Uh, maybe. 15, 14, 15, I think. And uh, I, then when he died, uh, my mother didn't want to go to the funeral, and we went, uh, the three of us. And, and that was it. Then he had to be buried because of Jewish rite. I think he died on a Wednesday. On a Thursday, he was right. presented and had to be interred. And uh, that was it. But I've never had, I, I really believe that I was raised without a father. Did your mother live long enough to see your success? I remember she came to one of my uh, first uh, openings, gallery openings, mm -hmm. and she wasn't sure what, she said, how did this come out of you? Mm -hmm. And I would say, this is basically the things that drive me. I, I have to basically make photographs of these, of, of these uh, thoughts. And she said, oh, okay. But she said something that, uh, it's, it's, for her, it was shocking. Sure. I said, you know, a, a, a vision is shocking because it's not the same as, as what we're conditioned. Uh, and maybe in, in the past, the things that we're used to were shocking, but now they're not. But it's, it's up to the artist to basically go inside and, and pull something out out of a desire and need that basically shatters beliefs and, and shatters uh, what uh, originality is, what uh, uh, concept is, what meaning is in a very, very, the deepest personal way. And she, she got that, and uh, she was fine. There was always this thing about, I was the more, my, my brother Jerome was basically established early on mm -hmm. because of the physicality of making things, mm -hmm. making drawings, paintings. And in my case, I was, through photography, connected directly through time, space, and, and physical occurrence that was undeniable. But I changed that. I, I took that as a beginning point mm -hmm. uh, to make my own references of, of beliefs and, and circumstances of, of uh, how, how the mystical factor of life is and can be expressed in, in the times we live in. And your sister, what kind of relationship did you have with her? Well, that's a good question. Um, she, being three years older than, than, than my brother and I, uh, she was always great in school. And I remember when she decided to be a teacher, and she, she worked 25 years as a teacher, and uh, a grammar school teacher, and she preferred uh, teaching exceptional kids, and she did that. And um, she married a couple of times, and I think she's, she's happy. From very early on, you've always um, looked towards the margins, if you will, the people that society deems, if you will, to be outcasts, whether they're post or pre-op, people born with or without, you know, without limbs, people, um, you know, thalidomide victims, et cetera. Where did that desire to elevate them to the stature of beauty through art references and Catholicism, where did that come from? Um, I, I, I think of my grandmother uh, who fell down a flight of stairs mm. uh, and when, uh, I don't know, she was in her 40s or something like that, and because they were very, very ignorant people by way of they weren't educated, my grandmother and, and her husband, my grandfather, on my mother's side, the Italians, uh, her leg became, ga wasn't gangrenous, mm. had to be cut off, but basically it wasn't treated well enough. Um, but my mother and, and her sister, my aunt, uh, would have to clean it every day and bandage it. And, and I, I remember that as the most consequential of uh, trauma in my family because I would wake up in the morning with uh, smelling coffee that my mother would make and also smelling my grandmother's leg. And uh, uh, it, I just accepted that. I accepted that uh, as a child. What can I do about it? You know, but I can witness it and try to understand. Yeah, but somewhere inside of you, you felt a connection to these people. Yeah, oh, my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Because her of her pain. limb. Yeah, uh -huh. and and uh, uh, the the fact that they were 
heroes in a way. They were challenged physically, mentally, and, and they still uh, radiated when they did. I mean, never, not everyone, you know, uh, makes it. Some people just basically involve and, and, and that's it, they give up. But I've always wanted to show the beauty of difference, the beauty of, uh, the singular beauty of pain, I guess you can say too. So I wanted to go over a couple of things that we didn't talk about yesterday. Yes. Okay. So one of them is that infamous story about, that you wrote in your first book about the, the accident and the head rolling down the street, et cetera. Um, and we just found a letter in your studio uh, from uh, another family that uh, says they witnessed the same thing. And so uh, I was going to read it, but I wanted to see if you remember what you said happened. No, I, I, at this moment, with the condition of my mind and age, uh, I really wish I could, but I, I, I don't. Okay. I can't. So you said that you had witnessed an accident and that a head ended up rolling, rolling towards your feet. Right where I was standing at the curb. Right, and, and uh, a lot of people have doubted that story over time. I, I, I think your sounds... brother also said he didn't remember it. Wow. Um, which is whatever, right? So this letter says, Dear Mr. Witkin, I could not find your email address or I would have cluttered that rather than your home mail. I happened upon your work, then read that you had been influenced by an accident you witnessed as a child in New York City in which a girl was decapitated. My father was there that day and saw the same accident, and the vision of it did not leave him either. It had to have been the same accident. I can't imagine such a thing as a common occurrence. He spoke of seeing the little head rolling in the street. He said he could not sleep or eat for weeks after and he had nightmares about it throughout his life. Indirectly, my sister and I were off also influenced by that event. His telling of it brought mortality into our lives much too early. We never had the comfort of believing that only the old died, that death was far away in some indeterminate future. Then and now, we have the weight of time's limitations on our shoulder. Your work seems to have upset a fair number of people. I'm glad that I'm glad for you that you have been able to forge your demons on the anvil of creation. I wish my father had been able to do the same. And this was, I'm not quite sure when this was sent. Oh, this was sent in 2007. It's nicely written and yeah, I it's was, beautiful. it's very, very important to me. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's something that I needed, a witness. Right you know, and uh, a, a person, or people in this case too, who uh, were affected by it. And um, I mean, I, I, I'm getting goosebumps. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I think that all of us see something or witness something or feel something or doubt something that propels us in one particular direction. And I, I think that that particular uh, circumstance really gave me a, a, a knowledge of mortality, and especially as a child, you know, that's the, you don't even think of that. Right. You know, you think about horizons and what's coming tomorrow, and play, and learning, and whatever. And uh, so I, I think that's very, very, uh, extremely important to me, and very, very valid. Mm -hmm. And it validates what I do right. from uh, a stranger. Right. And that couldn't be, it couldn't be better. And then you, it, can you now envision what happened? Or yeah. Is, yeah? Yeah, my, my, my visual memory is, is uh, pretty clear, pretty uncluttered, and especially something like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and even, even the way I wrote it originally in my thesis was, uh, I remember when I wrote that and I ended up, ended it with someone carried me away, or yeah. And that was very, very true because uh, I think when a person, especially a child, uh, witnesses something that catastrophic, uh, it, it basically uh, becomes, it, it melds with, with their visions and dreams and reality. I mean, everything kind of uh, uh, blends and uh, you want to absorb it and you, you want to uh, hold it back at the same time. But when something is that powerful, 
Yeah, it, it's irresistible. And it changes your whole spectrum of, of uh, feeling, seeing, uh, believing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's a gift in, in a very, very strange way. You know, dementia, it, it's kind of like menopause. It's, it, people don't want to talk about it. Now more and more people are starting to talk about both. But since we're not talking about menopause, although I'm sure you've gone through it, um, you know, most people don't want to talk about dementia. It's like this taboo, right? And, and you're, you're present, and you're, but you know you're in it. How, how, do you, how does that work for you? Like, how, how do you reconcile the loss of memory? Does that piss you off? Is it something you just have to accept? Yeah. Did you go through a period when you were pissed off? Mm. No, no I, I think I've, it, it's been a slow change, you know? Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the beginning of nighttime, we'll say, you know? And it's, uh, it, it's gradual and I, I've accepted it. You know, uh, at, when you're younger, you run around, you know, this, your capacity is unlimited, you know. And uh, then uh, you reach a stage where, I guess in late 20s, where you're probably at the strongest and, 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 and most emphatic uh, about your perception and ideas and uh, could, the whatever could, could be uh, consequential. But uh, after that, uh, you begin to say, well, you know, what have I contributed to life? You know, uh, what does it mean? And uh, even though you can't basically recall everything and, and show what you've done, uh, the basis of that is, in my case, uh, for sure, the honesty and, and uh, the, uh, the desire to give something from myself visually that basically constitutes how I am, what I am, what I feel, uh, what I hunger for, what I long for. And uh, in, in my case, too, the fact that I don't document images, I basically create them in Tableau. And I think that, that makes me uh, unavoidably a dramatist. Uh, uh, I have a, a cast of people or ideas, associations, and I prefer that. I prefer that. It's like when you wake up from dreaming uh, and you remember the dream, that's more comfortable somehow uh, than the reality uh, you're facing as the dream aspects fade. But last night we were talking how um, that you now take every day sort of as a gift and every day you live that day. Yeah to the fullest that you can. I think when we're younger, obviously, we think the days right. just keep coming. Right. Uh, and so that's maturity, and that's also accepting one's fate. Eventually, we are all going to pass away. I can't wait. I, I, I don't mean that. <laughs> I don't mean that. I don't think you mean that. No, no, I do mean it. I don't mean it economically. Right. Uh, because uh, I do have, you know, there are two kinds of people in this world, or two choices, I should say. Uh, you either, uh, uh, accept or reject providence. Mm -hmm. And I've, I, I can't, I've tried, I think I mentioned this before, uh, but I can't accept negation. That's, I think that's what it is, of, of you know, where this come from, you know, right. the space, and it can't be measured. Uh, and, and I think that uh, just from the point of, of uh, tribalness, you know, you, you might find uh, some people in some corner of the world unexplored, and they have their own belief, which is about wonder, wonder. And, and I think that uh, rational conditioning in life, especially in Western societies, has basically negated that. Uh, and for me, I've always, I've always uh, been very, very connected with the mystical. And I think art is mystical. Uh, and art manifests from, from the spirit something that is material and yet evokes the spirit again. And I think that uh, that's, that to me is, is totally, totally magical and wonderful. You know, what have I contributed? And I'm, I'm pleased with uh, what I've done. I'm pleased with uh, the stupidity, <laughs> the honesty, I, the stupidity with that, but that I mean is, is the fact that I, I just accepted happenstance. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't say, well, this can't be. I gave it a shot. I gave it, a, you know, a, a try. And um, 
it's like a, a kind of visual vaudeville uh, with uh, mysticism, uh, with darkness and confusion, and yet there's the premise of, of redemption in it. So um, yesterday we talked about you know, your belief you know, in God and religion. I'm assuming that, belie that you believe in heaven and hell. Damn straight. Where do you think you're going? Well, I'm going to purgatory. Yeah. Uh, no one gets a clear shot. <laughs> do you think you'll stay there? No, 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 no. Oh. Purgatory is to, to purge, you know, yeah. to, to be cleansed, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. And actually, when I think about that, I have, you know, in the Catholic Church, uh, there's a thing about mortal sin. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've ever committed mortal sin. And that means that uh, your, your whole mortality or the mortality of the person is at stake by your, the condition of your soul. And uh, no, I have, uh, no, luckily nothing like that has occurred in my life from outside because uh, it couldn't come from me. I'm not that way. But I am, as a Roman Catholic, uh, always, every day I think about this, especially at night, uh, before I go to sleep, I pray, and uh, sometimes it's just oration. You know, I talk about things, talk about what happened and, and what, what good was it, was it good, was it positive, whatever. But sometimes it's more formal, I, I think, in terms of uh, um, testaments like the New Old Testament, especially the New One, New Testament. And um, I have no problem with... Uh, the presence and the life of, of Christ as God. No problem. So you think you'll spend some time in purgatory? Oh, yeah. And oh, then, yeah. I'll and then go you'll the, get out of purgatory. I'll go to the artist section of purgatory. That's right. Well, we already have a, f a photograph of that. So um, that was very good. Um, and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then you'll be released because you'll be cleansed. What do you yeah. think you need to be cleansed of? Well, that's a good question. I, that's what I'm going to find out. Right. But uh, uh, what happens um, is that when you die, you see, in, in the terms of the Catholic Church, you see the presence of God. And, and that is so overwhelmingly uh, wonderful that it can't be characterized in any way. And then you're in, you want to go to purgatory to be cleansed so you can see that beatific vision again. Um, for the people who, who find your work an abomination, you know, that you're uh, antichrist, if you will, uh, besides saying fuck you to them, how ha, has that ever affected you, that kind of negative um, feedback when you know that your faith is as strong as it is? Well, yeah, I, I, when I've given talks, some mm -hmm. people just walk out. Right. Uh, some people like, you know, say, yeah, fuck you, uh, yeah, you're a piece of shit. And, yeah, I, I can't change that. Mm -hmm. I can't change that. I, I think it's, it's basically, um, I think it's healthy. Healthy dialogue. To challenge people, you know, and, and uh, take on the responsibility of saying, this is what I believe. I, I don't think there's a lot of that going on. I think there's more and more people that basically have just kind of like pulled the plug as far as their own individual a reason uh, for being alive and, and basically explaining existence. People, and myself included, are interested, you know, on the day-to-day -day with dementia, how, how it has affected your work, um, or has it? Well, it's, it's basically ended my work. Well, you're still creating. I... Or are you now, um, yeah, if it's ended your work, how do you feel it's ended your work? Uh, I'm, I really think that I've, to, to create, you have to be 100%. And I think I'm down to about 50. And uh, so out of respect for the need for the, the holistic, maybe the, the perfection of, of the outcome, the ideas, and as manifested as fo in photographs, uh, I'm comfortable in not making work. Uh, you slow up, you have less energy, but in, in that process, you feel deeper, you observe deeper, and uh, you're, you love deeper. It, it makes me reflective of my life and what I've done, 
And I think I've done a pretty good job. 75%, maybe 80. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to hell. I'll no. tell you that much. No. I've never done anything that basically tore a soul out of a person and never wanted that. And I think my work, even though it's considered dark, is, is right for how I perceive. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, you know, I'm a dramatist, I'm not an optimist, and I'm, I'm surely not a, a negator of, of life and, and what that means, but uh, I've, I've devoted my life through photography of seeing life and perceiving a certain way through that medium. And uh, I think I've done a pretty good job. And it's, it's the last hurrah. It is. This is uh, close to the end. And, and with that, is there anything that you want to say that we haven't covered? Is there, any, is there anything you want people to know that we haven't talked about? Uh, I, that's the best question. And, and um, I, I would say that everything I've done, I've done with a, a sense, a real true sense of complete honesty and purpose. And even when I was uh, making images that people regard as uh, maybe, I don't know, freaky or strange, uh, that to me was this uh, connection with the, um, the injured and, and the, the, the picturing or the photography of, of those conditions as something really grandiose and beautiful. And uh, I feel that I am a healer, uh, rather in my work, rather than a kind of presenter. I'm, I'm happy with uh, what I've done. Uh, I think that um, uh, when I die and I'm, I'm judged, I think that I'm gonna get a 75 out of 100. The amazing thing is with this disease I have, five minutes after I say something or hear something or see something, gone. But I don't, I don't, it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's part of my being and it's, uh, it doesn't affect me, although it, it makes me concentrate on the moment more because that's all I have is the moment and I'll forget that. You do know that, right? I've told you that before. You are my favorite. Thank you. I feel very privileged to be able to speak with you. Well, that's great. You know, I really feel that uh, it's just a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to show the last photograph that you made in, in, a, new, in a new gallery, you know? Um, it's great. It's the perfect beginning for us. Mm -hmm.